you can't feel like that about bro because he do so much to look out if it like everybody that you just <laughs> named if it wasn't for bro they time would be a whole lot harder not saying they would have never made it because everybody got their destiny but it's documented at the times when it really mattered bro looked out because he looked out for me he looked out for shy he looked out for trail you feel like it ain't good enough or it ain't that's on you but bro did what he supposed to do and he consistently does it Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's poppin'? You already know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill is here. J Hill Podcast. Uh, shit, we don't even do the numbers no more, but we here. Um, I always say it feel good when I go back home. So this ain't really quite necessarily home, but it's close enough. For the niggas that's back home, that's not understanding that we got to stick together. Y'all just got some growing to do. Southeast DC is in this motherfucker. Yes, indeed. My God. Yes, indeed. Light show is here. What up, hey, dog? We long overdue. We long overdue. Hey, show. hey, Kyron, is um, this is Mike low as hell. I mean, he good with that? Yeah, I'm I mean, good. I'm how I'm looking. I you know what I'm saying? What I need yeah, to pull that's, that's, it up. Or? Let, let, he gonna get you right. He gonna get you. Oh, I mean, shit. Well, yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, yeah, you know how you work, make the dream work. You know. Yo, bro. Um, do you feel like you a legend? Do you feel like it? <laughs> I know I jumped straight into it, my bad. We got straight into it, huh? Do you feel like... Nah, where I'm from? Most, so you so you know? Most definitely. Like, I mean, I, I think it's just the love that I get, the knowing what D.C. is like and how it is. Like, hell yeah. Like, that's how they treat me. That's that's what it is. Like, you, I accept it. It's crazy because, like, just coming up, you know, when I got into the rap game, like, everybody was like, light show, light show, light show. Yeah. And, like... I saw the impact, but it was almost at that time, it was like you were out of my reach. It was like, man, if I get light show, then shit. <laughs> Honestly, uh, being real. Nah, ain't nothing out of reach, man. I yeah. mean, I, I'm saying at one point in time, it felt like that, though. Yeah, man, shit. For you sure. just doing your thing. That's all it is for me. Like, this shit just doing my thing, just working, just like, I, I never planned none of this. Like, it's not no blueprint. Other than Wale, it's not mm. no blueprint. If you and Wale is his own person, so if you ain't him coming from DC, then shit, you gotta make your own blueprint. And that was a, I looked at that shit as like, oh yeah, this and, give me an opportunity to. And y'all was tight. We all tight. Y'all, y'all tight. Yeah. Can sure. we talk about that for a second? Hell yeah. So, pardon the ignorance. Yeah. Because again, I'm from Baltimore, so I don't really know too much of the DC culture. Okay. Okay. What I do, so if I do say something, you can correct me. We men. You know what I'm saying? Sure. We men, so. All right. But uh, just, I'm just giving you that open door. For sure. But um, so from the outside looking in, I'm going to tell you how I feel. I feel like Wale is like the DMV. Like, he put all of us on, to be honest. Like, he he he, he brought the, the spotlight to the DMV. Big but facts. I, I feel like the DMV always trying to take credit away from him. Hell yeah. I feel like it's like that thing when you first, though. It's the hardest. Like, when you the first person to really break out to that level, it's going to be so much pushback. Like, what the fuck can you really do? Like, it's like you can't pray for peace without – if you pray for peace, you basically asking for, for war, mm. the way I look at it, because you can't have one without the other. So, like, what can he do? Like, you got to accept it how it come. When motherfuckers can't do, they going to talk about it. When they – they going to judge you if you do – do shit so it's like you're gonna be right you're gonna be wrong you can't please everybody so shit you just gotta lock in and focus on yourself that's what i mean what can you expect somebody to do but again right just from outside looking in it looks like and the other guys i'm about to name they're still dope and respect but it's like they take so much away from him prop up the other guys but it's like they leave him out like for example like shy glizzy um of course fat trail like niggas put on for them yeah but it's like it's almost like and 
as a disservice to Wale. Like, why can't niggas put on for all of them? What you mean, like, like, like it, it, niggas, it, it, like the streets put on for them, or yeah. like the people, like. But even that, it's just, it's just like, it's like Wale is kind of the black sheep. It's like, yeah, Wale, he from here, but but then niggas like Glizzy and and Fat Trill, like they go hard for them, but they don't go as hard for Wale. Nah, I don't think it's think like so? that. I, I think it's it's a, it's a stigma, probably. It's like it's a maybe it's the cool thing to say at this time or that time, but. You can't feel like that about bro, cause he do so much to look out. If it like everybody that you just named, if it wasn't for bro, they time would be a whole lot harder. Not saying they would have never made it, cause everybody got their destiny, but it's documented at the times when it really mattered. Bro looked out for niggas. He looked out for me. He looked out for shy. He looked out for trail. Shit, if you feel like it ain't good enough or it ain't, that's on you. But bro did what he supposed to do, and he consistently does it. And I'm not just here off no type of, like, I'm just going, whatever he do is right. Nah, he would. I saw this man with my own eyes try to look out for thousands and thousands of people. You know what I'm saying? That's more than a lot of people have done with the opportunity, so... I don't know. I just think it's a bad stigma. Or it's cool to say because motherfuckers trying to get over top of that. You know what I'm saying? But to do that, you got to sell as many records as that man did. You got to go number one as many times as that man did. Otherwise, what we talking about? The numbers don't lie. So you can say what the fuck you want to say. The numbers don't lie. The global effect don't lie. You know what I'm saying? This like, true. I don't know. And so I don't. Do you think it's because? So not saying that the art. I don't think I'm not saying that the artists do this. But do you think it's just the, the the people who have they lack the knowledge, so they don't understand, they don't know, or so they, they just hate us? Like, cause the common person, that's who the guy is. Wale for the common person. Right. Everybody is not a street nigga or this or that. Like, what you? What's the goal? The goal is to get out get and go out. as big as you could go. You know what I'm saying? Like, why the fuck y'all Wale. trying to pull this man back, man? Let that man go on and then shit. Follow the footsteps. Figure out what you can learn because you can learn something from anybody. If you could learn from a crackhead on the street, what not to do? You mean to tell me you can't look at this man and figure out a thing or two to do? You can't figure out one thing to do. Like, come on, man. That nigga ain't, man. It's just, do you think he, he paid, because y'all close, do you think he paid too much attention to the streets? Because, like, it's like he be having his, he know what the fuck niggas is talking about. Like, shit, do you see, like, this being <laughs> on the map? A nigga say, say, yo, over here, it's going to echo for the whole city. So you're going to know. I think the hardest thing is kind of, like, not paying that shit no attention because you're going to hear it, like, mm -hmm. one way or the other. And you might feel a way. You might not, you know, but... It just depends. But when you've been active outside for so long, I right, you talking, what's going on? I'm everywhere. I'm active. I'm like, ain't nothing happening to that man. So the opinions, like, you can't lose lose sleep over niggas' opinions, you know? No, nah, and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it feels like uh, niggas going to boost their opinion up just to be, just to have something to say. But, like, if, you, if you're, if man, come on, man. If you ain't showing love, you just a hater. Cause nah, facts. I don't. It, it, it just seems like, because it seems like he be passionate. Like, I think. Yeah, he I is think, passionate. I ain't going to lie. I feel like the only thing, if I had something negative to say, right, it yeah. would just be like, he got his ears to the streets too much. Like, sometimes it'd be like, oh, ignore these niggas. Like, that's the only yeah. thing I could say. Because he, sure. he going to let niggas know, like, nah, like, niggas need to respect me. But yeah. it's like, bro. But that's what, I feel like it ain't need, I guess, to your point, basically, it's not worth it. Because what, what do you get from exactly. it? Exactly. But. You only human, and when you so connected to the city, it is gonna make you feel a type of way when motherfuckers that you know you support and fuck with, and and my, you see them in the comments saying some hating shit or some weird shit. It's like, well, damn, what's up with y'all? You know what I'm saying? And either you internalize it, and you put it all in the music, or you talk about it some or whatever. But nigga got when you he came in. Look at who he came in the game with: Kendrick, Drake, Cole. The f you niggas lucky he even having that conversation with y'all nah, sometimes because come on man like that's but that's why i say i be feeling like sometimes it it does him a disservice because yeah he, for he, sure he's i think niggas be sleep because they so they think they so close to him because he's from dc yeah because like he's a superstar for like sure. he's really and that's like, what niggas need to understand it's a difference <laughs> between a star and a superstar like he's like my a, man a superstar right so but that's why i said i think sometimes it doesn't but the service is pa his passion behind it yeah it's for like, sure bro you don't need to be explaining yourself like fuck these niggas yeah don't explain yourself yeah to just just keep going just go to the top <laughs> to the top of the mountain and fuck whoever said what like, fuck facts. him i don't hear him i don't see him i seen um because I, I think I, I seen one time he was on like 
what is it called? Clubhouse and shit. And oh, like, yeah. Like me, I'm looking at it like, cause I like I'm I'm going, I'm trying to be a star, but I'm looking at it like, damn, this nigga is really like he don't have to be here. Yeah. He just joined a club, he, yeah. a, a clubhouse chat. Do niggas not appreciate that? Question. Like, do niggas not appreciate that? But you saying like it's like why would you waste your time doing it? Both. That's what you saying. No, both. Both. So like, part of me is like the the artist in me. Like I'm not an artist, but like the talent in me is like, yo, that's dope. Right. Ain't nobody doing that. Right. But another me is like, why are you doing that? Because they not going to appreciate it, bro. Yeah. I mean, if you got to look at all the other motherfuckers on Clubhouse just telling all they business, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you got this shit going down. If you if you done tuned in lately, like, it's wild on that, man. You know, Niggas right. explaining themselves to absolutely nobody, you know? So if you got a room full of all your peers and homies, you want to check in and see, like, what's what? Like, let me stop through. Like, man, trust and believe, more people do shit like that than we are led to believe it's just mm. because it's so small everything's so impactful everything is blown up way bigger than it gotta be if snoop dogg go in the west coast run right now and just whatever they man it ain't gonna be that much of a big deal you okay. know so it, uh, i mean you right because i think even uh roddy rich had checked in yeah yeah now like, that <laughs> you can <'cause, laughs> but i <laughs> I'm gonna say he probably could have. Now that's somebody that could have skipped over that conversation. You know what I'm saying? But they both superstars, though. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Like no dick here, bro. The nigga, I think when they was on Dream Chasers, like niggas, the the niggas like Meek Mill. But if you gonna be real, I think while they was the only one that was doing gold, like he was the only one doing real industry numbers. Yeah, you talking about like MMG? Yeah, MMG. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. When he was doing, M I said Dream Chasers. When he was, <laughs> when, he, when he was with MMG, he was yeah. really. The only one like selling those big time numbers, so like, yeah. he's a superstar too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Damn, bro, that's crazy, man. Yeah, Much man. Love my God, man. From a place we gotta go hard on the paint, but we from man. Do you, do you feel like sometimes they try to trap you into that box too? As far as what, like, like I don't know, cause I remember at one point in time you was doing a lot of freestyles when you first came out. It was like years. Oh, ago. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, okay, it was like. You can't make no songs, and then yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like niggas <laughs> never satisfied. I so for me that kind of helped me, but exactly like that was my whole that was the whole thing with me was I was doing freestyles. They like you can't make songs, so I'm like, all right, I like at that point it was like, all right, I guess I need to make songs. Then I guess I need to really turn it up and figure it out, but. That was interesting. I mean, I don't feel like they put me in no box. I kind of feel like they just challenged me to to be my best self, you know, mm. or whatever the case may be. But, ah, uh, yeah, maybe they never satisfied. Maybe they are. Uh, my bad. I got No, you good. You good. I'm, 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 listen, yeah, I'm they looking, be all right. They, I'm, I'm looking at him, right, because he's doing the same thing that I want him to do. Yeah. He's really like, because it's killing me. I got Yeah, let me eat. fix this job. All right, we good now. We good, because I got to be able to have a little Appreciate range of motions. I grab my drink and all that. But, yeah, I don't know. I think um, it just depends on how you look at it. I was, And it's crazy because now that I'm making songs, with the freestyles, with the freestyles, so it's like you can't you can't please everybody, you can't know. Please like nobody at this point. Yeah, you can't please nobody. You just gotta do you, and I really love this shit. So I'm gonna do me when I feel like freestyling. I'm a freestyle. When I feel like dropping songs, I'm gonna drop songs. Like, but I didn't show I could do both, you know. And for how what? is it in that space? Because yeah, we talk about Wale, right? And granted, Wale a superstar, but I feel like in the respect, you are that to your city and the local standard. Yeah. Like, you are that big name. Like, you yeah, are, like, sure. an OG at this point. Like, for niggas sure. be like, bro, I want to make it big. Like, like Wale, like, Glizzy, like, like this person, like, Light Show. I yeah. feel like you're in that For sure. That name. For sure. How is that? Like, how do you deal with... Talk to me about the pressure of being a Light Show in D.C. Honestly. What's like, the, what, what is, what's, what is, like, um... I guess I kind of like shy away from it a little bit because I don't, I don't take on so much of it. Like, cause I, I feel like I, I am this. Like, I'm just me. Yeah. I ain't do nothing extra, nothing extra spectacular to get to that point. I just worked and I did something I love. Like, I love music. I remember what a, when I first heard a DC song on the radio it was while they dig the. I'm in the car in this place, this shopping center, East Over Shopping Center. I heard that shit come on the radio, and from there, I went and went home and fucked my mother computer up, trying to download shit to record off, trying to find this, that, and the third. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, it could be done. I'm going to do it. 
I'm I'm li- like literally a kid at this time, you know. So it's like I don't know. Um, I I'm cool with whatever pressure come with it. I think it's just about for me mainly. It's like a personal journey because coming from where I come from and the mindset that I used to have to the mindset that I'm growing into, mm. that's the biggest challenge because it's like everything I thought growing up that I was supposed to know or do this type of way, mm-hmm. you realize like, damn, you wrong. It's fake. It's fake. So now all this time that I spent indulging in this fake shit, you can't get the time back and it changed something about you. So shit that you might have, like my moral compass is like compromised based off like being in survival mode, you know? So shit that I'm like, nah, this normal, this regular, this this cool. When I get out here and I'm and I'm around people that got different understanding, it's like, you think that's cool? Or why would you even accept that? Why would you tolerate that? And now I don't know whether I'm I'm being too lenient towards shit, like because I come from it, or I'm like, damn, are y'all just being too judgmental? I don't know at this point. You know what I'm saying? Because everything is so normal. Like it, where I'm from, it I bet it, like do what you got to do to get by. Whatever you got to do. Whatever, you and know. It's okay. And it was okay. But now, shit is not okay. And you don't know what was okay and what wasn't. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, Right. They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Bro, you know, this is why I like talking to niggas like, like you, right? Like us. I say like us because you understand. Like coming from the hood, it was so many things that the hood taught us. Like you said, like yeah. we thought was okay and we thought was right, and then For we sure. heard that, bro. This is holding. This is the shit that's holding me back. For real, this this one little thing, this mindset, this way of doing shit is keeping me from greater things. What was some of the things, or what was one thing that you think the hood taught you that you thought was right at a point, but that you see is actually wrong now? Just that by any means necessary type of vibe, because mm. shit is not by any means necessary if you can lock in and focus and whatever you don't want to compromise your morals or or compromise your future to get something right then and there mm. but coming from the hood you're gonna think man i see it grab it you know like make it happen right then and there not thinking how much it's gonna affect tomorrow or how it's gonna affect just who you are as a person mm. if you want to elevate once you start elevating you get around these different people and you now you got to hurry up and elevate yourself or, or you could be so caught up thinking that what you're doing is right that you start leading people down this certain path. Mm. Now, when you change, do a 360, they looking at you like, well, mm. I thought you knew. Or what's this? Or what are you supposed to know better? And I'm like, damn, I thought I knew better, but I really didn't. So now I got to humble myself, relearn this shit and whatever. And now, you know, people, they looking for any reason to look at you this way or that mm. way. Oh, yeah. Like, man, they gonna use anything against you, so you gotta just know what you know and be and be steadfast in that and and like it's like people are so it's weird because people reject being different so much that they almost don't allow you to grow. Right? Exactly. What happens is when exactly. Different, they they shy away from it. So they know this light show from the hood, from southeast, that's all they know. But once this light show becomes to grow into a man, right? It's like Oh, I don't like him. He changed. It's like, bro, I'm. I didn't change. I grew. Yeah. Allow me. A hundred percent. I I would like to um not challenge you, but get a, give another perspective, right? Like you said, by any means necessary, and it's not by any means necessary. I would like to say, I think 
it still can be by any being necessary, but by the right means, right? So, for example, when I was coming up, one of the hood things that I learned that I had to relearn was not being a bitch. Yeah. Right? That was one of the things in the hood, like, don't let nobody, you're not a bitch. Don't for let sure. nobody be, like, you know what I'm saying? And I had to learn that, okay, not being a bitch doesn't look like fighting somebody. Not being a bitch actually look like walking away because that's actually to to suppress my feelings and to contr- and to channel my channel my feelings to walk away yeah. is actually harder than smacking <laughs> a nigga in the face. For right? sure, because it's sure. easy to act off emotion. One hundred percent. I had to learn that, and I'm like, you know what? Now it just look different. It still be a because it's not not being a bitch. It's really just being a man. Right. So I had to learn a different. Right. Right. That, right. Right. For sure. For sure. So I, it's it's still. It's still by any means necessary, but, but by it, the right means. By the right means. That's yeah. the thing. So I think that's the beauty of these of these things is you can say something, but it's always a next level to it. Mm. And you throw it out there just to see, okay? You throw it out there to be challenged. So I'm I'm glad that you said what you said because it still is really any means we necessary. Still get it. it still is. <laughs> but it's really about the right means, right. the smarter means, exactly. the better means exactly. that's gonna allow you to be here tomorrow, mm. that's gonna allow you to have an opportunity to do something. Talk to but me. but you could trick a motherfucker saying, Oh no, nah, it ain't even by this anymore. And if you gonna take if you take that as face value, that's on you. Mm. Cause you shouldn't challenge everything. You should not take anything at face value. Get to the deeper point. I ain't everybody ain't just gonna spill a beans to you all bucks like, oh no, nah, it's this, but it's this, this, this. You gotta learn to read in between the lines, you know? Yeah, that's a fact. For sure. If it's crazy because at one point in time we thought by any means necessary, right? But what we did was we put ourselves in compromising positions to hold us back. Right. Right now, by any means necessary means okay, I can't sell drugs because I got too much to lose. For sure. So by any means necessary might mean I might have to get a job when I don't want to. For sure. That's by any means. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's just a it's just a mindset <laughs> switch. A, facts. For sure. For sure. Damn, it's crazy because bro, like again, it's it's crazy how different we can be and i started by saying it's close enough right dc and baltimore yeah for sure i wanted to ask you do you think speaking of disservices do you think being outside of dc do you think we do ourselves a disservice by separating each other and like even y'all even more because it's like dc and pg yeah and like even in baltimore like we're not a part of pg but you come out here and they look at us as a region yeah they don't that's the, that's the no hard PG, part DC, for sure i mean i always i got friends from baltimore i got I never really took on that. Like I always got had an appreciation for the culture, like the difference of the culture. So I I don't know. I've always embraced it, but I definitely feel like um, I definitely feel like it's it's something that's held us back just because mm-hmm. we we could have all been way more locked in than we are, and that's what will make us a big reason. But it's just I guess the lack of respect for difference for people differences. Mm. I don't know. I feel like the person who it's the comedian dude that's from Baltimore. He he do a good job of like when he do them little skits. He might talk in a Baltimore accent, then talk in a DC, then talk or whatever. That's a way where people could appreciate all that mm-hmm. shit under one umbrella. But at one time, niggas was real live haters. Like what you talk like what like uh, uh, make you less than. And once they say niggas was active, just like they was active now, they respect the way a nigga talk, whatever. But that's all a nigga ain't shouldn't have to show you that he get active for you to respect where he come from or whatever but that's part of learning before mm. niggas off somewhere i gotta see it to believe it now you better know that shit there because once that shit hit you by the time it it's too late so mm. i don't know I, I i definitely think we did ourselves a disservice by not embracing each other more but when we have em- embraced each other it's worked right. it's worked even out like honestly to be honest right like going back to the wally thing right let's say not even baltimore because that's like an hour away I feel like even it was a time where even still to this day I see these arguments, DC and PG. It's like they yeah. they trying to separate each other so much when it's really just doing yourself a disservice. Yeah, that shit is a, that shit is crazy though because I remember when everybody wanted to be from DC at one point, like PG whoever, like it was just you gonna claim DC, but shit after they got their own wave going and they got some people on, ain't no ain't no none of that you know. So it's like. It is weird being from a place where it's like people came up off, used the name to come up, and then once they got up, they don't give a fuck about DC. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That just go to show you, like, damn, maybe, I don't know. Do that mean we should have been more cordial with motherfuckers or nice? I was, I always been accepting the people, but people going to go back to their roots. If they ain't really from DC, 
and they use that to get on once they get in this game and they want to be authentic they going right back to their roots where do that leave our culture at you know so that's i feel like that part for me is what make me like damn separate but equal because i can embrace i don't i mean i didn't lived in pg before i didn't live in dc in Laurel, right? i didn't live in yeah i done lived out low I done, like i didn't lived a couple places and it's all good but i remember even move when you do go somewhere new you got that sense of pride like i'm not from here like y'all do not <laughs> talk to me like that don't don't look at me don't talk to me i'm not from here i'm hopping on it i'm i'm getting the fuck out of here as soon as i can you know so I don't know. I just, but it's a sense of pride I got. Like, I love being from D.C. Like, I love it to the core. I don't mind nobody being from Maryland, you know what I'm saying? I don't mind nobody being from nowhere, but I love being <laughs> from D.C. It still sounds like you got that, man, fuck them niggas from D.C. Ah, nah, nah, <laughs> nah. It's just I got to hold it down because our culture is at risk of, because so many people look at other people for that that get to their pinnacle and they say, well, I'm not really from D.C. I'm from this place, this place. The cultures are not exactly the same. Like the shit, the struggle that's in na your neighborhood growing up in Southeast is not that exact same. It's similar for sure, for sure. Almost identical, but it's different, man. And mm. I don't know. Like just coming. So you, you think people use the coattail almost of DC just to get into some doors and then strip the rug right underneath you once they got in the door, kind of? For sure, for sure. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, Everybody do it, so it's so normal. People from Virginia, you meet them out in California, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm from D.C., instead of just saying they from Arlington, Virginia, or whatever the case may be, because they think more people know D.C. But i also been out, but at the same time, i also been out in the West, and it been so many people that you say from D.C., they don't even know where the fuck. Right, when you say at. from like, uh, I don't know, a, a somebody in PG, they be like, wait, what? They so don't they know. Like, I'm in DC, they, and they right. know where that's at. It, man, some people don't even know where the fuck DC at. They like Washington State. Oh like, yeah, what? Seattle. <laughs> they be like, wait, Washington? Like you don't know the capital? Like, oh, okay, that nah. that's a humbling experience too. You think everybody know what's going on there, and they don't, you know? So I don't know. It's it's hard. Yo, you know what's crazy about DC? Like, I feel like. It's similar in Boston where we call each other yo, but y'all have so many names like Mo, Slim, Holmes, Polo, Polo. I feel like everybody <laughs> named. Everybody. <laughs> I feel like everybody in DC or PG named Polo. They got a, everywhere you go, it is somebody named Polo. Maybe back then, right I feel now, like it's like a hundred niggas named Polo. Less, it's less now, but yeah. Where the fuck that shit come from? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, long live Polo, who is the uh, you know. The lead talker for TCB band. Oh shit! Sorry about he that. He a man. legend. Damn. Yeah, Big G Polo. Polo is TCB. Come on, man. It's crazy. No, it's crazy because I, I wouldn't even think of that. I was thinking oh, like there's it. so many other polos that nah, I met. That's the that I heard. That's that's the pinnacle of the polos, man. Oh shit, my bad. Yeah, it don't. Damn. Yeah, it don't get no rest in peace, man. It, yeah, rest like in come peace. on, the CFE TCB, Sweet Swoo Lord, like come on, that shit right there. Life changing, man. Damn, how was that? that you know, it's crazy. The first time I heard uh, Go Go music, I hated that shit. <laughs> the first the time first I time heard I... Baltimore Club music, you yeah, you probably, I hated that shit. You probably did. I can see a nigga listen to that shit. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, what? I can't even move like this. <laughs> no, in fact, but it's crazy because, like, I'm not gonna lie. So, niggas might kill. Don't kill me for this, fellas, or whoever watching. Don't kill me for that. Baltimore, yeah, I'm cool it's with the cool. Club music it's, now. But I remember, like, once I started to like uh, Go Go music. It almost gave me, damn, niggas are gonna kill me for this. It might be a stretch, but it almost gave me the vibe of reggae music, almost. Hmm. When I like, like the right songs, like um, yeah, it gotta be the right song. Yeah, not every song, cause yeah. you got some songs that's faster than others, but it's right. like you, when they when they do the R and B. Yeah, see when they slow it down versus that, that should, bounce beat, that should be hard. That's, I, ain't gonna lie. I feel like anything slowed down, you can appreciate it a little bit more. Maybe that's why chopped and screwed music. Now that shit. Super slow, but maybe okay. that's why that wave was going on for a minute. But maybe anything you slow down, you could really take that it should in. That shit a vibe. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, for sure. You know that what I'm What's that the Adele song? Um, yeah. Hello. Um, that shit go yeah, crazy. Yeah, they, they went crazy on that. <laughs> Yo, that sure. shit go crazy. What's your like, favorite Google song, I guess? I don't know. I, can, I ain't gonna lie. I got it's so many, but it would be a slower song. Like, But you ain't get into Go Go because you was rapping young. You, you know wasn't crazy. Going, so I was rapping, but rap wasn't a thing. Rap wasn't respected. It was on, we were still going to the go-go. 
you know um at one point in dc you couldn't be a rapper and just come to dc and perform you had to come with a go-go band or you wasn't they wasn't hearing you oh so shit. um that's my introduction to people they rapping over go-go beats jim jones might come down do balling with the band like they coming out they doing they sets with the band it wasn't no just singular shows so um i came up under them go-go legends i was uh, engineer like before i got known as a rapper i was engineering at the studio and in the basement of that studio was all of where all the go-go bands practiced that man the head engineer here got fired man i ended up having to mix a whole go-go fucking album and i didn't know what the f i'm like what the fuck this is a big task but nah go-go was so much a part of the thing until it wasn't like mm. it was you couldn't escape go-go like, i guess that's why um Shit, it's, see, it keeps coming back to Wale, but I guess that's why Nike Boost was so big, right? Because it kind of was like the first introduction to the world of, like, it wasn't the true go-go, I don't think, but it had some some drums in it, right? No? Yeah, I mean, that don't weigh more hip-hop, in my opinion. Of course, because you're from D.C., but I'm saying yeah, so to the world. Super, I don't know. I they, like to, I don't the, know. to the world, I think they heard some type of drums in it. No? I don't know. I think, no. I would say... If anything, um, bait, bait. Who on my line? Who on okay. my line? I'm going nuts. Okay, okay, okay. okay. That zone was super go go influence. A zone like uh, Nike boots that Wale hopped on. I mean, I said that Wale, that Lil Wayne hopped on. Like that okay. shit was hip hop to yeah. me. To it, okay, the hop. I, I get you know it. I get what I'm it. Saying? I get so it. I can't really see the go go in it. Yo, did you um when you was a producer, right? Was you, well, you when you was an engineer, was you um. Did you ever, was you ever telling people your rap dreams and they was like trying to stiff on you? <laughs> was I? <laughs> Listen, I was telling the studio owner my rap dreams. And he like, uh. Stay in your place, young man. No, bro. you know what I'm saying? But so, but that's how I got my first project done. Being in that junk, I bet. I record all y'all niggas, help y'all out, get y'all these vibes, get y'all good energy. Watch when y'all go home and all this shit over. Watch what I do. Mm. And I'm pressing a button, boom. Walking to the booth, recording. This before niggas was smart enough to say, man, let me bring the mic outside of the booth and have it right here. I'm pressing a button, open up the double doors, going through the other double doors, going through the sliding door, and I'm recording. So if I fuck up, I got to go back out there, press the button again, whatever. That's how it was for me recording my first shit, like, in the midst of all the go-go shit going on, you know? I was the nigga that was in the studio, not changing clothes for a week, going home, coming right back, because somebody always had to be there. I was the nigga that was always there, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. guess what? I help niggas make their best songs. I help niggas do all type of shit, thinking, like, the more people you help, the more they going to see you. Did it work like that? Fuck no. They ain't see nothing. I, I got videos of them sessions that I did. I always knew what I was trying to do, but... They ain't respected until they had the respect. Right. It, it, isn't it crazy? Because I tell people all the time, like, even with my interview shit, I'm like, is a tech, is 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 a reason for why I, why I do things. I'm like, yo, if I get niggas to look good at minimum, I can get this type of person. This type of person is connected. This type of person. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But what happens is you got to show them first. Yeah. People are shallow. It's like. For sure. If I, if, if I ain't had no traction or, or no action, you know what I'm saying? Niggas won't want to come on my show. It's just, it's sure. what it is. For sure. Right? And I guess, I guess it's the same thing because I wasn't. You would have had to see past where I was at in that exactly. moment. I'm the nigga. I would. Like I said, I will come to the studio wearing the same shit. Cause I'm not able to go home. You know what I'm saying? I might not have a haircut. I might not have none. I'm just in here thugging. And at that time, you ain't have to be no, no type of pretty boy or nothing. You just be yourself. But I, ain't, I wasn't fly. I wasn't nothing. So motherfucker probably looking at me like, eh, what is he gonna talk about? But that's the same shit that helped me figure out what I was gonna talk about. Talk about in my music. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, bet we already got the fly niggas that's out. We already got the wild niggas that's out. What the fuck can I be? Where I'm, where, what can I use a mind? I'm like, all right, I can use my mind. I can say, I told myself, I said, all right, bet what I'm going to do is no matter what I talk about, I must talk so much of my true feelings, my real feelings about this shit, that somebody going to hear that shit and be like, God damn, mm. I feel just like that. And I bet my whole situation off that, saying shit real enough that a motherfucker would be like, Oh yeah, I felt like that before, and that that helped get me that little cult fan base of people that's like, oh nah, I respect what he do, and that's a blessing, cause like, 
it's about making songs. So when motherfuckers really listen to the words, you know. Yo, what's popping? This episode is sponsored by BK Juices. Look, man, if you're looking for some drinks that's refreshing and that's also healthy, make sure you check out BK Juices. You can find them online at bkjuices.com. Social media, Instagram is the real BK Juices, and Facebook is BK Juices. If you want 10% off, all you got to do is go online at bkjuices.com, enter the promo code JHill10, you get 10% off. Like I said, if you're looking for something that tastes good, that's refreshing, and that's also healthy for you, check out my people at bkjuices.com. That's BK Juices. That shit meant a lot. But then at the same time, it got to the point where motherfuckers like, oh, yeah, you too preachy, you too whatever. And I dumbed it down. They then. was on a, like the hood preacher type shit. Right. But then I dumbed it down because I'm like, well, damn, I don't want to just be preaching. I want whatever, whatever. But shit, you are who you are. I'm going a, I'm to a preach to you if I'm your homie. I'm a, It's just who I am. I'm going to try to know better, figure out what's better, do better. And then it's your duty as an educated person to educate, mm. not just school educated. If you know something, it is your duty to go back it's to the motherfuckers duty. who don't know and let them know. Mm, and that's mm, what mm. that whole name Light Show is about. Light, knowledge, show, to show the way. That's it. Just get some knowledge. Um, get some knowledge and then pass that shit around. That was the whole point of what I was doing anyway. So Damn, so at what moment did it change? I mean, at what moment was it like, this little bum-ass... Uh, engineer at the studio keep trying to ask me for a verse to yo light show i'm trying to get a feature at what at what moment did it change and when would you ever ever see it i don't know what moment did it change yo i know when it changed so it was this dude named prince i'm from southeast he from uptown um man he had a studio i was telling him like man look i could run your studio i could do whatever but really i got a passion for this music and i'm I'm willing to like do my best. This man, he believed in me. He gave me that opportunity that nobody else gave me. Like he gave me a way to put a little a couple dollars in my pocket at the time. That's all I needed. Like I ain't have no motion. Like he helped me get a little bit of motion. So now I'm going, I'm outside doing a date, eight to eight at the store, doing my thing. Then after that, I'm shooting straight up to the uh to the studio, dead tags and all. Just this where I want to be, and he gave me an opportunity to, 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 to show the world your light. Yeah, Almost, and he right? believed in me. I seen this man. It's people that got respect for me now that he had to argue with. For I, I made this life sentence project. He had to argue, motherfucker, down like, no, this is that. Listen, you not hearing what he's saying, and they sitting there telling me in my face, nah, I don't see it. Like, I don't like it. I don't hear it, man. That shit have hurt you, but to have somebody fighting for you like that, nigga put me in my first fly outfit, nigga, to shoot a video like he real live believed in a nigga, and that shit helped change everything. Cause Is that, he still here? Hell yeah, he's he still, still here. Yeah, he's he still got, in he the doing camp? different business. Nah, business-wise, we ain't still, like, locked in working, but he's still active doing different things, like, not music, you know, because... I don't know what his full plan was for music, but he had that studio at the time, and everything just worked out, you know. So give me some game on this, because I'm always curious about this. Like, so people seeing you in your in rare form, right, and and, and in your light. Yeah. Speaking of light show, right? Um, people seeing you in your light and not in like I guess you wanted to be a rapper, right? But people saw you as an engineer. I mean, people, because you was an engineer at the time. Yeah. Do you think it's important to 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 be introduced to somebody as what you do first? Like, for example. Hell yeah. yeah I mean, but, it could definitely help. For sure. It's funny, because like, I'll be, I'll be telling people, like even like with Jess and shit like that, Jess Larry's, I was like, I'm always so humble in myself to be like, yo, if you need a cameraman, I'll get behind the camera. Right? But I tell people, like, don't tag me. I'm not no cameraman, because I don't want, I don't even want people to associate right, with me right. like, with that. That's interesting, because I'm that type of person. I'm back to any means necessary shit i'm gonna do whatever help the ship keep exactly. going i don't care i if i need to be the janitor i'm gonna be the janitor if i need to be the cameraman i'm gonna do all the things i would want somebody to look out for me and do but people are shallow so you got to be careful in the way you let you allow yourself to be seen by people that mm. might not have that understanding because they might they are going to try to little mm-hmm. homie you or just look you off and that'd be the worst mistake. Like, how many times have people looked off somebody and then they end up being him and now they reaching out for him? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you won't be that person or, you know, 
Or yeah. you gonna believe. It's crazy, Kyron, because like, um, shout out to my audio guy, Kyron, right? We was talking yesterday and I was asking, um, we had poor minds on. And I'm like, yo, why do girls always want the, the, the leader of the group and shit like that, right? And I'm like, it could be, we was talking with like the boss. And she was like, yo, we was talking about b bosses. And she was like, yo, a boss is somebody that understands how to take a step back, right? And that's crazy because it'd it be so many people who are so ego driven. That's like, no, nah, I can't be looked at as underneath here because people need to need to know. But what separates you is understanding that, okay, I might have to push this button, run through all these doors and, and record. Yeah. I might have to grab a camera from my homie or I might have to set, show my homie how to do the audio. That's what makes you a boss. And I think that's even, and I hate to say it, but this even go back to um, Wale. When I'm around, dog. I don't give a fuck what city we in, what you need, bro. What can I do? How can I help? We go, man, it don't matter. It, he don't always got to pay for everything. Man, I'm, we going to dinner, everybody, I pay. I do whatever I can to help because that's the fucking thing a nigga need in that space. I'm not going in there trying to be like, oh, I'm light show. Y'all need to hear my raps. Y'all need to do whatever. Man, I'm a, I don't give a fuck if I got to. Make my shit after everybody leave the studio, and now the, the niggas done seen me so solid. They like, man, what do you do? Like, cause it's interesting, you doing all this, but then you got motherfuckers coming down here to see you. What do you, man, the right people gonna see your light, and mm. they gonna be like, hey, man, you could come in here and work. Let's work, let's do this. Now look at you. All right, bet. Everybody else gone home, you able to get your shit off. You know what I'm saying? Keep coming back, come back the next week. Now motherfuckers like, oh yeah, that's bro that be with, man, let him in. Like, that's how I, I took over LA like that, running around that motherfucker off the strength of just it being ain't solid what you know, almost. Being solid, but it's, motherfuckers think being and I'm solid like that for whoever. I done been with Glizzy and done the same shit. Okay, bet I know what you up against out here. We going to Boston over. Bet I'm taking blick. I'm I got your back. Whatever happened, it's gonna happen to me first. Why? That's just the way I think. I don't ain't no ego with me. But a nigga get you fucked up thinking. Oh, yeah, this, if that's what you think, then go ahead, because this shit ain't going to last long. I'm not going to be around you every day doing this, but when I'm around and I see that need, I'm stepping up. Like, I'm not waiting for nobody else to step up. I'm going to do it the fuck I can. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's just what I believe in, though. That's crazy. How did how did you even meet Wale and Glizzy? Like, was 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 this, like, everybody hung together at one point in time or no? Well, me and Glizzy, yeah. So, um, we was, we just, I don't know, we just linked up one way or the other and click like it was me my homies we was in a rap group i started off in a rap group i was sh i was too shy to rap by myself so i ain't never imagined me being no solo artist like never but uh we used to go pick bro up bring him to the studio all type of shit like this way before it, niggas got on we was recording in closets we was just trying to figure shit out you know so how do niggas split like even with the because like again i don't really know too much but we see the the act glizzy and the shy glizzy and like like all of that however that happened how do why like i'm just curious like because it's like we're so much stronger together how does that happen like how do, how does niggas get so into their own head that niggas just go that separate ways i guess i don't know their situation per se so i can't fully speak on it but i know niggas don't have that men like i don't know i can't i ain't even gonna say niggas don't have that mentality or i'm gonna look out for you no matter what because niggas do what well, i don't know I don't know what happens. Um, I think just pride get in the way, ego get in the way. Sometimes people make decisions based off of shit that they shouldn't make decisions on. I'm just speaking from my experiences with people that I don't fuck with no more. Like sometimes people overplay their hand. Mm. Sometimes it's just growth, you know, and you grow different ways. Like it's so many That's ways that fact. shit could happen that I don't really know, you know. I think and you just touched on something without even going into it, right? That growth piece, because I feel like that's something that I'm still learning. I feel like a part of growth is understanding when to step away, yeah, like when to walk away. I think sometimes I could be childish in my mind of always wanting it to work, right? Not understanding, it, bro. I need to just cut my ties and walk away. For sure, for sure. Damn, that's that's. That I'm, I feel like I'm the same way. Like if I believe in some shit, I want that shit to work. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, all right, have we exhausted every option that we do? We supposed to do that? We try to look at it like this, but everybody not. They they not on that wave of like oh no nah, we could figure this out no matter what I cause I'm I believe ain't nothing you can't figure out it ain't nothing that that can't be worked out but once shit go too far shit is what's too, too what, what would you say is too far like for example like 
Do you think like like Ant, right? He's an antagonist. Like I think he's just he's just funny as shit on the internet. Do you think some of that should be too far? Or like it's just you understand his jokes, I guess. Uh, me personally. I don't I don't <laughs> like it. I just okay. I don't I don't I I don't know. It's for me personally. It ain't my cup of tea. I'm not with that. All publicity is good publicity. I don't like that. I'm not with saying all this shit online. Like I'm not with that, Mike. I'm big on legacy. Like mm. if if you, I want my legacy to be something different. So I don't even want to align myself with motherfuckers who do certain shit. I don't care what nobody do. Do you? But I'm me personally. I don't like it because it mm. sent motherfuckers the wrong message. If if the average person get out here and do that shit, you're going to die. You're going to die. It's not going to last for you. So why even start that up when we try and put our people in so much of a higher level where we come together, work together? Like, all right, cool. If you if if somebody a comedian, be a comedian. Go be the best comedian. Go ahead and make your edgy jokes, whatever. But if you go between, like, trying to pull motherfuckers down, like, and being a comedian and doing this, like if that's what you gotta do to survive, cool. You and your enemies necessary bag. So I understand. I don't, I can't blame you, but me personally, I don't fuck with it. It's a thousand ways to get it out here. I just don't. I don't like all that antagonist shit. Cause when a motherfucker react, then what? Mm -hmm. Like mm. everybody can't understand that is a, a joke. For sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I then. I just don't, yeah, I, I don't believe in putting motherfuckers back against the wall, make them have to react. Like, let a motherfucker live and let live. Like, so I don't know. I, just, I feel you. I guess, again, like, being on, some people would look at it like it's jokes, right? Like It ain't just, funny to me. Like, so many niggas died. So many niggas died where I'm from. Them jokes, that shit ain't funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I personally don't believe it's funny, you know? Mm -hmm. But if that's what a nigga got to do, who am I to judge? You know what I'm saying? Maybe God told them, hey, this is what you got to do, and they following their plan. I don't know. But me personally, I don't do that type of shit. I don't want that type of shit yeah. around me. No, I get it. I, I don't know. I never, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't really even... wouldn't even. And, and it's already showing a level of respect by even acknowledging it and speaking on it because I don't want to just bury a nigga and say, oh, no, nah, man, fuck that, fuck him. I don't. All right, bet. I, I see what you're doing. Cool. But me personally, I just, nah. No, nah, for sure. Now, we definitely got to respect that. And that's why I try to tread lightly on these topics because, you know, depending on how it's asked, it can be kind of like, shit, it could be the same thing, honestly. Let's be real. Like, yeah. some of these interviews, they get people in the real men for, the, for these big clips and, like, yeah. try to finesse. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So, like, that's why I try to tread why, lightly. I'm going to be real, though, about how I feel. And if, if my opinion offends you or something, Okay, like, because I know I ain't got nothing negative like that yeah. in my heart for a motherfucker. But and niggas ain't even offended, cool. On, I'm not even going back and forth with no though. nigga. I ain't going back and forth. I ain't doing all that feel. How you feel? I say what I say. I'm going to feel what I feel. I'm going to move my path I'm going to. I ain't. It is what it is. So, off that. For sure. You in, you in, a, you in the A. Hey. This nigga. Yes, yeah, sir. You going to college. Wait, are you, are you on campus or you doing online? I'm on campus. This nigga is on campus. <laughs> I'm on campus, <laughs> going this, to school, man. I'm getting A's and all that shit. Yo, how hard of a transition is that? Cause you're you're like a little older now, so it's like yeah. you had to really have a whole different shift in mindset. It's 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 really fun. I feel like all this shit prepared me because I didn't I didn't travel the world. I didn't been around these certain type of people. That is like I like challenging myself. I want to be able to be my best self, no matter what room I'm in, and able to be and be able to be understood. Mm. And for me, that's what I'm doing. Like I'm a leader, no matter where I go. I'm. That's what I'm doing. That's how they look at me at school. They appreciate me. My teachers, damn, they're trying to go get me to get a PhD and all that. I'm like, chill. I don't know. I ain't. I don't <laughs> let's know. Let's take what it step I'm by a, step. Te let's take it step <laughs> Let me by get this step. undergrads real quick. You know what I'm saying? Let's take it step by step. But for real, it's just doing shit that you could never imagine yourself doing. But I got my shit set up, though, where I got all my classes crammed in on certain days. So I'm only going to school a couple days out the week. And mm. I got a break in between them days. And then outside of that, I can still get active. So right now, my life is full. And honestly, this is what I need because... All that idle time, doing nothing, or just trying to strictly focus on just rap, 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 or 
this, this, this. I don't have no time to focus on no negativity. That structure like, is so important, right? That shit is the best ever. And it's crazy because as much as much as it seems like you got on your plate, the structure kind of make it easy. It make it easy. It right? make it better because as a man, you need structure. You need discipline. This shit is a good time to be able to, because for me, I don't never want my kids. By the time I had kids, I don't never want them to be looking at me talking about, how you going to tell me to... I did it all. I went to school. I did this. I traveled the world. I sold records. I did all this. I kept doing both in the midst of it. Like, what you mean? Ain't nothing you can't do. I just want to be, I just want to do everything that niggas ain't think I could do, that I ain't think I could do. My question is, bro, why the fuck you go to, it's Georgia it's Tech, right? Georgia State. Georgia State. Yeah. And, wait, Georgia State not a, a HBCU, right? Right. Why you go to Georgia State and not at HBCU? That's a good question. I don't know. That was I my mean, first question. Like, like, why you just go to HBCU? HBCU? Yeah. I think niggas go to the HBCU for the for the stigma. Like, all right, cool, but like, I don't for the hoes. You said for the stigma. For what? Like, for the, <laughs> they go to HBCU for, for the, the stigma. What, for I the mean, hoes? just for the, just to say, oh yeah, I'm at an HBCU and this, that, oh. and the culture, whatever. What I'm gonna go to Clark Atlanta down here? I think that's like all boys school. I mean, that's here. it's like, a it's, it's a lot of culture in that, bro. It is. It's a, like it's it a, is. That's how people too. That's very true. I think I'm I'm my people everywhere I go. I don't know. I'm I'm at Georgia State. That's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm I don't know. You know, I would have went to Georgetown if I could, or, or Howard, or whatever. But I'm just too. I can't go to school in my own city. It's it'll be it'll be too much. Yo, the I niggas just, I would have went to Georgetown. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I just can't go in my city. It probably would have been even a little bit easier. You know, they probably I could have got a. I could give me an honorary degree in the in the city right now from anywhere and skip all this. Nah, but I believe you. I'm just working, man. You might have to get that too. Fuck it, get two of them up. Matter of fact, why not? Well, yeah, yeah, honorary don't yeah, run away, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? some shit for the wall. Put that shit in a, in a in But no, nah, it ain't really about none. This shit just another challenge. Like, I love it. So how you, how are you, how you taking all this in? Because this is it's a lot of change. And I when I talk, I try to get, just to get people feelings, you know what I'm saying? Because I know, like, you got a lot going on, but I'm pretty sure it'll be times where you in the house and it's like, man, it's things that, that get to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, when the last time you thought about something that was like, that hurt for real? Every every change in growth hurt, period. Because mm. every day is just trying to get you out of that mindset that you was in. I swear to God, it don't go away. Like, I could revert back to the person I was in a heartbeat. It take everything in me. So I think the fact that people mm. don't understand how hard it is to try to be this good person, to try to be positive. Now, them bags come because my brand is flawless. I get calls from... Listen, the Wizards, the Capitals, the Nandos, the Pumas, the all these. I'm t- from companies because my brand is clean. So at the end of the day, it's monetary value behind not getting into certain stuff. But at the same time, I'm me. And I can't, I'm not just a picture perfect this, that, or the third. Like, this shit get active in every way you could imagine. Anything you with, I'm with in a, on a different level of and being like I with said, it. though. It's harder to, it's easier to enact and like to interact in that, right? So when you gotta not interact in it, that that's where the pain that's comes. For from, sure, one hundred percent. Where it's like, damn, I really gotta think. I really gotta, but really, I could really I go could there. Get active with whatever way you want to get active, and it's like the shit I did. I'm like, I don't want to even glorify it because, shit. I don't even know how I feel about the internet still to this day. Like putting all my business out there, what I do, how I do it, when I'm doing this and that. I put I already say enough in the music where if you really break that shit down and decode it, you'll be like, what the fuck? Mm. I don't want motherfuckers to decode my shit. I just want them to listen to it, take it for what it is as expression, you know, but that shit gonna come out one way or the other. So I try to just stay focused on something positive, but it is the hardest thing in the world, man. When was the last time something like really hurt you and you was like, man, what the fuck? And what was it? Hurt me? Yeah, like something, it could have hurt your feelings. Like, be Let's real. Let's see. Like, what was the last time? Like, what, it could have been school. It could have been like niggas nah, talking some school. shit. It ain't school. It's. I think the, I ain't gonna lie, I think the biggest thing that ever hurt me was just 
homies that I try to do anything I could for, like look out for that end up turning turning they back on me, you know, like or going against me. They don't stay for the clout. Like they 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 see they don't see me as me at this point. They see me for the clout that they could get for if they go against me. Mm. That shit right there, that 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 probably hurt the worst because it'd be people you got genuine love for. But um, so I, I'm appreciating the people that's, that stay solid throughout the time. But I don't know. I think it's just that's probably it. Just just motherfuckers that you would have done anything for that just don't got the patience to see how this shit go or then had a vision to see where this shit was going because they look at it now. I'm sure they'd have been like, damn, I ain't know you was going to go make these transitions and these transitions. But at the time, you just want a motherfucker to do what you want them to do. And for me, if you try to make me do what you want me to do, I'm going to push back. And now we're going to have issues mm. that we ain't even have to have, you know, just because now I'm feeling like, damn, you're not about to make me do this. I am. You don't want to be understanding. I ain't going to be understanding. So when I got to go with my – it hurt me the most when I got to go with – the principle over what I want to mm. do in my heart, you know mm. what I'm saying? Because I'm like, damn, it could all been so simple, but you take it to a certain level. Now I'm on principle, and I'm big on that too. So I think that's my biggest thing, just that between what you want to do in your heart and what you got to do for the damn, circumstance. That's some real shit. Because what you want to do in your heart ain't always the, the best thing for you. For sure, or it ain't. It, or it might be dangerous for you, or it might be you opening up the door for a motherfucker to just do whatever they want because you going from the heart and they going some any means necessary shit. You know what I'm saying? You can't fight that with that. And you can't force them to be where you at mentally. A hundred percent. Right? Like you, you grew to be, to understand that any means necessary isn't quite any means necessary, but it's the right means necessary. But somebody else who ain't learned that yet. Right. Still on go mode. Man, and it's like, like this shit uh, by who? I think it was Swift that wrote the allegory of the cave. Where it's basically the story about motherfuckers who thought they were seeing the real shit because somebody was making shadows on the cave wall, but really it was just illusions. And then once they got out that cave and got free, the one person who got out there, the sunlight was so bright they couldn't even see it. And once they adjusted to it, they like, oh shit, this shit was all fake. Mm. Let me go back and, and let them know. They like, man, they can't, they're not believing it. You got us fucked up. This is real. This is what it is. So when you do try to go back and educate motherfuckers, it's going to be pushed back. It might even be deaf, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's our duty. As educated people, you have to educate people, and it might lead to your demise, but that's the game we play. So I think in the biggest self, the biggest sacrifice is self-sacrifice. So I'm basically sacrificing myself to try to help a motherfucker understand what's better, but that make me want to accelerate my learning and my knowledge that much more because I'm like, damn, Shit, if I'm a if if this shit gonna be detrimental to me in any type way, I gotta get all I could get out of this joint before it's over. I gotta learn as much as I can. It's crazy because even with that, right? Even with you being in that, the people that don't get it might not get it, and it might hurt. But the one, two, maybe three people that get it, it makes it so it much make more it, worth it. It make everything better. You just like I right, bet. But that's why it's important for you to stay in your purpose. Once you walking in your purpose, you're going to meet the motherfuckers that's aligned to be in your purpose. And then you're going to be able to decipher them from the motherfuckers that you just meant to help out. Stop by and do this for, do that. But the more you walk in your purpose, the more you pe you meet them like-minded people that's going to, you know, help you get where you're trying to go. It's crazy because they say, uh, um, ESTG said, like, um, my heart might get me killed, but it got me here, so it's a risk I'm taking. Right? <sighs> Like, that's a hell of a line, man. That's, and that's a hell of a reality to live with, for mm. sure. But that's the truth. Like, damn, man. that's it's, it's crazy. So what about, like, are you, you like, got any situations going on? Like, you got a girl or anything like that? Like, man. Oh, that's kind of a real personal question, but. Yeah, that shit is. I mean, shit. Like. <laughs> I asked that. I'll, I'll explain. So I asked that because a lot of times, bro, like, People, I be trying to be vulnerable, right? And those are the, the spaces where we're most vulnerable as men. Yeah. Right? But a lot of times, like, we see so much shit and we get hurt by things that we are hard. it's hard for us to express ourselves to other women or people in general because of the things we saw. Yeah. Right? And that's why I was asking, like, where are you yeah. at? Like, where are you at mentally there? Like, are you like, man, fuck these hoes. I'm focused. <laughs> or is it like, man, nah, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where you at? Nah. It's like, 
Um, I don't know. Relationships are interesting. Like I, I gotta. Damn, that's so crazy that you asked me this because I really don't even know how to answer it. Mm. I got a girl that, if I'm completely honest, I got a girl that I fuck with that I love for sure, for sure. Is it? It's just trying to figure out the differences of just lifestyle mm. and everything like that communication mm. me being who i am and trying to balance that out with like making her feel seen in the right ways that she want to feel seen i feel like i'm learning so much but i don't know if it's at a certain cost of mm. anything so i don't know like i'm i i, I if i had my choice i would want to be with the one girl who i fuck with who i love who i put some time and effort with but I and I hope that's the best thing. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know because I'm learning. I thought I knew so much shit at one time and I was wrong about that. So now I'm not even the person who I fucking first told her I was going to be. Now I'm a I'm a whole now I'm, a, I'm an evolved person, but I don't know. Isn't it so crazy? Like because life is like an onion, but like a big ass onion. Right. And it's so many layers to peel back so many because like. It's so much that we had to learn just to get out the street mentality, right? Right. And then walking in our purpose, walking in our manhood and our masculinity and understand femininity, right? Just walking in that. It's so much to learn about this. It's like, bro, it's like, God damn, give me a break almost. And who and ain't nobody got they ain't being lenient towards <laughs> nothing. They not you supposed to know this, you supposed to do this, but it ain't that simple. Oh my it's God. feel like it's supposed to be that simple, but it's like, damn. I had to learn shit too. I had to process this shit. I had to yeah, it's good. You could anybody could talk a good game in the beginning to get it going, but when it's really time to walk it like you talk it, it's so many other things that come in your mind that make you question. Like, damn, you like you said, you walking in your masculinity and you trying to understand femininity and but, even accept the femininity that you have in yourself because we was taught that we not supposed to be feminine, right? But we read the way of the superior man, we understand that we all have masculine and feminine yeah, traits. For sure. But uh, accepting that, but I don't even know how to accept how that. How can you accept it when a motherfucker going to use it against you as soon as you do, or if it don't fit their narrative at the time, where well, you want to try to be understanding, now motherfucker going to walk over you, and then when you get on your shit, now you a misogynist, or you a, or you just a, you like you narcissistic. You, you narcissistic. Oh my God, you narcissistic! <laughs> like you all this. Like damn, what what space do men really got to be men? Like women, I don't know if women fully understand men. And mm. us men, we have to understand women to even talk to them, to get at them, to know who we could talk to, who we can't. I don't know how much women really understand men and what we go through in our growth process. I don't think they understand that they are the key that can make us better or make us worse. Mm. You stay down with a nigga and you help him really learn them things, he going to apply them without you having to tell him because it's in our nature to learn and apply shit. Like, it's in our nature to solve a problem. Exactly. Things, Not right? just keep on running into the brick wall. So We're trying to fix it. 100%. So that nigga that you think just can't get right, that nigga could get right overnight. You believe in him, you be encouraging to him, that man could come and do a whole 180 mm. overnight. That's how quick change can happen. But motherfuckers be so holding on to the past or who you was or what you did. And ain't nobody perfect. You mm. know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It's just really, I would tell anybody that if you want to be in a relationship, know it's going to be hard. If you really want to get to the pinnacle of that joint, you got to go so deep that it's going to be hard. Them it's conversations might last Two weeks of, and, and that's the same thing of trying to enlighten somebody. It's going to be hard, you know what I'm saying? So it take two to really be committed to understanding, like, mm. this shit is hard, but we in this together, you know? Mm. So I don't, I, I, I hope, I hope that shit go, like, the way that it's been going well and good, but at the same time, you never know. So I'm, I try not to get too attached to anything. Because I don't know what somebody else's growth process look like versus mine. You know what I'm saying? Or what they threshold of tolerance look like. Everybody's so big on pride and ego. Everybody's so big on this IG shit. Like, IG ruined so many relationships. Oh, you responded to this person. You talked to this person. You know this person. You That shit don't mean nothing in that the grand scheme. And for real, be a good person. Talk to who you want. If that's the case, I don't even know what to tell. I don't even these days. What do you? What can you expect from a motherfucker? 
don't talk to nobody, don't respond to nobody, don't whatever. I don't fucking, I don't know. I don't know. Just be you and be real about who you are so a motherfucker can pick and choose whether they want to accept that or not. And then just try not to be judgmental, I guess. But this shit difficult. It's hard, man. I think life in general is just, it's, it's so many layers to it. And just trying to do the right thing and always coming across, always trying to do the right thing but coming across the wrong thing so many times can be dis discouraging yeah right because it's like bro i don't know i only i don't know what i don't know right so i'm doing the best that i can but when i cross some when i cross a path that's something that i didn't know and i had to learn from it it looks like so many things to it looked else. like so many things and it's, and it's not that it's not that and now you having to explain it's not why like that's the thing that's why when you got an issue with somebody attack the issue mm. not the person mm. don't attack a motherfucking character if somebody make a mistake or make a choice or a decision because a, a mistake is not an accident a mistake that you make don't mean that you oh i accidentally didn't know i'm letting you know this is what happened and this is the results it's a mistake it don't mean oh how's that a mistake if you did it on purpose Man, I, I maybe I didn't have the knowledge at the time. Maybe I wasn't thinking about this, but it's something that happened that it, that can be fixed. Niggas ain't really out here just. You gotta be a wild nigga to be out here just doing crazy shit. shit. You know, the average nigga is not like that. And I think you and you said it right, but you ain't say it right. You gotta attack the issue, but attacking the issue is communication. communication. First thing I said when I, I'm like, yo, excuse my ignorance. I say this all the time, but I'm like, but we men. So if I say something, I'm not going to take it wrong, but correct me. 100%. I feel like we should be like that, especially as men. If I got a problem, I should be able to come to you and be like, yo, bro, I ain't like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you should be able to acknowledge the situation or the issue and be like, you know what, bro? I can see how that made you feel, but I didn't mean to do it like that. And we can be able to get over our differences. For sure. A lot of niggas just aren't able to communicate with it because I say this all the time. It's like I'm beating a dead horse at this point. I feel like a lot of niggas can't do these things. It ain't the pride and ego. It's niggas, it's confidence. Niggas lack confidence. Because if, if I'm confident enough in myself, I could come to you and I could have a conversation with you and I could be like, even if it's uncomfortable, I'm like, yo, look, I ain't like that, but I'm confident in, in who yeah, I am. for sure. And you know that, where do you get this understanding of what you like and don't like? Once you know that and you, and you know yourself, you're able to speak on that and then you can say, okay, based on how somebody take it, okay, they not ready for that conversation or they are or they, they not evolved to that level or they just not ready. Cool. I'm let me stay away from this person because what's the point of trying to, you know, you do what you can, then you plant the seed. You can't always water it. You know what I'm saying? Plant that motherfucker, let life water it. And a lot of times people don't understand that a fact doesn't have to be forever. Right? Just because. Man, like, damn. Just, that's just, the biggest every day. Like, just because something happened, like, yeah, it happened. My bad. But that is like that. That doesn't have to be forever. Like, that we is can not get over that. the tr man for sure. It, it changed every day, you know. But the the thing of the matter is that's why communication is so important because subjective truths versus objective truths. Mm. If you got a subjective truth that you basing it off your feelings, your emotions, what you want, that is the most dangerous thing ever. That allows anything to be acceptable, and once anything is acceptable morality is not there mm. you have to say okay this how i feel this how you feel now let's talk about the real deal in between that because how you feel that subjective truth means nothing to nobody but you it's mm. what's best for you that's the most selfish thing you could do so i think it's like you said it's communication getting to the root of what the problem is how you solve it and then moving forward from there but mm. definitely all that emotions and you want to have shit your way that shit detrimental to the growth yeah I, I i love this conversation bro i feel like men need to have these conversations all the time and hear these conversations yeah i feel like you know it be it's so much more to a person than what they do right like For we sure. ain't even like we know light show everybody know light show from the music For sure. so a lot of times when i get on these my conversation it, it, it be about everything outside of what you do because that's who you are. And I appreciate that because I, I try to hide who I am from so many people because I want to protect it. Like, I, I'm i like, man, I know I'm somebody. I don't have to just go and give it away. But I I'm, I am try to be more open and just myself in the right platforms, though, where's, mm. where's, where's appreciated, where's understood, you know. And then sometimes you just not in the right situation. You just got to be vulnerable and say, you know mm. what, let me go in and have these conversations 
even if I'm uncomfortable, because this is shit that need to happen. The more motherfuckers talk, the more people could learn. The more you can learn yourself, the more therapeutic it is. So at the end of the day, shit. Now I appreciate you for coming and and, and even being vulnerable with me, dog. I, uh, we in the A together. You know what I'm saying? If you I nah, mean, let's get yeah, active. I'm trying. Nah, let's. Get I told active. you how I felt. You already told me. Hey, I'm, <laughs> that's what I was gonna tell you. Like I got you. Like nah, we, I appreciate we, it. we active. This and shit, I got. Man. Man, we got a lot of shit going on, so we active. Yeah, man. We could just, it only had to be work. Like, we could just drink. Like, listen, we active. I'm working. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah. from today on, <laughs> oh we we active. I promise you Already that. Got we got that. a lot going on down here, too, man. Like, man, I appreciate I'm, it. I'm trying to build my, t- my, my just motherfuckers that I fuck with, and you being from back home, this shit. And I can man, help you. We gonna lie. And you I can see, help you too. You I got the saying? shit, whatever you know what I'm saying? Man, this <laughs> shit, one. That's the difference when you on your path, though, and you. This shit is nothing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Alley oops off the backboard all day. I, I we gonna no, I appreciate it, dog. Active. Yo, light show. Uh, tell everybody how to follow you and everything. Y'all can follow me online everywhere. Light show, tenth place, tenth place. It's not ten people. You know what I'm saying? Light show, tenth place on everything. Um, light show on Spotify, Instagram. I mean, Apple Music, all that. Just check me out. Listen, like it, like it, love it, love it, hate it, hate it. Whatever you feel. Do something with it. Do something with it. You know. Like show. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is a fucking rap. We out.